In Mark 10, 45, Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for others. Giving our lives as a ransom for others, that's foreign to most people. There's a tendency in human nature to be selfish. We want our lives for ourselves. How could someone give their life for me and for others? When I first came to Baylor University, I learned a lot about its history. And I was walking across the campus one day and I looked up and saw little signs on the light post. As I moved closer and looked at them and started to read them, they were tributes, memorials, if you will, to individuals that had gone to Baylor through the years and had lost their lives in the wars, going all the way back to the Civil War. One jumped out at me as I read it one late evening. The name on the plaque was Jack Loomis, and I found that he was an all-conference football player and a great baseball player as well. He was drafted by the New York Giants after he finished playing at Baylor. And on a Sunday afternoon, they were playing. And right after the game, the announcement came to them on December the 7th, 1941, that America had been bombed. Pearl Harbor had been bombed and we were at war with the Japanese. Jack Loomis went down the next day with other teammates off the New York Giants. He was a natural leader and they joined the Marines. He became the platoon leader, then the company commander. Then they found themselves in boats, landing barges, off an island, a dirty dark island in the Pacific, Iwo Jima. Going in for the landing, he was leading his company on a mission that was impossible. They were to take the Japanese high ground that overlooked the beaches. And on that day, 7,000 Americans were killed because of the Japanese position above the beaches with mortars, with machine guns, and of course, those booby traps that would blow up. Jack led his group across the bloody beach to a knoll that was protected they had to get over the knoll and up the side of the hill and take the Japanese, those machine gun nests and mortar brigades. And all of a sudden Jack rose and he said, men, we must go. And he led them over the burn and an explosion and Jack's body flew in the air and he jumped up seemingly uninjured and moved forward again. His teammates, his individuals in his company were following him. And then an explosion and the dust settled and it looked as his men said as our, our leader was standing in a hole. He is actually standing on the nubs of both legs. Both had been blown off by a landmine. They looked at Jack and he was waving them on up the hill. One of his men, and this was written in the Congressional Medal of Honor write-up that he received that they felt like they needed to shoot their commander to get him out of his pain. But he looked them in the eye and waved them on and take the hill, we must take it. And they wiped out all of the machine gun nests. Jack wiped out three on his own before he was knocked to the ground with the explosion. Of course, Jack died. But on that day, Jack gave his life for his men and for that fact that we in America today have the freedom that we have, giving our lives for others. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, Paul sums it up. Offer yourself a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. No one in America has a greater chance to serve others than do we as teachers and coaches. We don't have to give our lives. We have to give up our capacity to be selfish with our lives. We must do what it takes to serve others. Jesus came to serve. How about you?